to Revelation chapter 12 to put this all together since we know what these symbols are now. Revelation chapter 12 verses verses 1. It says, and there appeared and there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman or the church clothed with the sun or Christ and his righteousness and the moon or the word of God that testifies of Christ that reflects Christ under her feet or her foundation the church's foundation should be the word of God and we see that in Ephesians chapter 2 let's go to Ephesians chapter 2 to see this Ephesians chapter 2 Ephesians chapter 2 starting with verse 19 Give me a second. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 19. And it says, Now therefore, ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God, and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. And what is in the word of God? Apostles and prophets. So it says, And are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, and Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. So our foundation, just like this church in Revelation 12, their foundation was this moon, was the word of God, and was Jesus Christ himself. And she was clothed with this righteousness of Christ. So is this church a pure church? Is this church a false church? This church is surely a pure church because it is having Christ on them it, it is covered with Christ's life no more will you see our lives but you will see Christ's life covering our life and and we will be standing upon the Word of God that will be our foundation the Word of God in Christ himself so now let us go back to Revelation chapter 12 verses 1 to put these all together it says, And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman, or the church, clothed with the sun, or Christ, and the moon under her feet, the word of God, the foundation, the word of God is the church's foundation, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. So now we want to see what these crowns, this, what this crown is that this church is wearing. Let us go to Revelation I'm sorry, let's go to 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 9. See what these crowns are. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 25. And it reads, And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. So we do not want a, a corruptible crown that will not last forever, but an incorruptible crown that will last forever. That victory over sin, overcoming sin. So this church was wearing this crown, symbolizing how they have overcome sin, how they have an everlasting, incorruptible crown. And let's go to another verse to also see what these crowns are. Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 62. Isaiah chapter 62 to see what these crowns also represent. Isaiah chapter 62. I'm going to start with verse 1. Isaiah chapter 62 verse 1. For Zion's sake will I not hold my peace, and for Jerusalem's sake I will not rest, until the righteousness thereof go forth as brightness, and the salvation thereof as a lamp that burneth. And the Gentiles shall see thy righteousness, and all kings thy glory. And thou shalt be called a new name, which the mouth of the which the mouth of the Lord shall name. Thou shalt also be a crown of glory in the hand of the Lord, and a royal diadem in the hand of thy God. So we see here that God has likened to his people, which is Zion, a crown. He he represented he yes, he represented them, he likened them to a crown. So we see God 
is likening the church, his people, to a crown. So now let's see these stars, what these stars mean, because it's 12 stars upon this crown. Let's go to Revelation chapter 1, verses 16, to see what these stars represent. 1 Corinthians, I'm sorry, um, Revelation chapter 1, verses 16. And it reads, And he had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength. So this person who has the seven stars is Christ. Because it says his countenance was the sun, as the sun shineth in his strength. So this is Christ holding these seven stars. And these seven stars represent angels. We can go to Revelation chapter 1, verses 20 to see that. It says, The mystery of the seven stars which thou sawest in my right hand, and the seven golden candlesticks. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches. So we see here that these seven stars are stars represent angels. And you can also go to John chapter 10, 24 to also see how stars represent angels. So there will be angels on this crown. Well, let's go back to Revelation chapter 12 just to read it all over again. Revelation chapter 12 verse 1. It says, And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. So we know what this crown represents, victory over sin, having an incorruptible crown, a crown that will last forever. And now, we also saw in Isaiah that this crown represents God's people, um, the daughter of Zion, God's people. And now we saw that these stars represent angels. Well, let it also, we know that angels represent messengers. So they could be like ministers or preachers, and that's what God has called us to do. Being able to preach to all the world, being a messenger for Him. So these angels are representing you and me. These messengers are representing you and me. God, his, God's people, He wants us to be able to preach the word to everyone. He wants us to continue the work. If you remember, other stories he, God had called Abraham God had called Abraham God had called Daniel they were all doing a work for God giving the messages being that witness that faithful witness for the world so that they will know God wants us to be those stars we are God's stars he wants us to shine for him and give that gospel out to everyone so let us let us read Revelation Chapter 12, verses 1. Well, before we read that again, let's go to Hebrews chapter 11, verses 39 and 40. And it reads, And these all, having obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise. The people that it's talking about is like Isaiah, Hosea, David, Paul, all God's chosen people, the disciples, the twelve disciples, Disciples, Peter, James, John, Andrew, the 12 patriots, the 12 apostles, the 12 tribes, all these people God has called. And he has also called you and me to do this last work, to preach the gospel into all the world. So what are we seeing? What we're seeing here, that all these people have done a work for God before. before. And it, and it says, but they received not the promise. Then verse 40 it says, God having provided some better thing for us, that they without us should not be made perfect. God had his people back then in Bible times, in the ancient times. God had his people to give up the gospel, to come out of Babylon and give the gospel out. But now he needs us to do that. Because we're the ones that have to finish this work. We're the ones that can hasten God's coming. By giving out the word, we can hasten Christ's coming. Because he is coming for a holy people. And he wants us to be able to give out the word to everyone. And it says that we may become perfect. That we should become perfect. And But without this promise, without us, 
doing this work, this work will not be completed. God needs you and me, you and me, to do this last work, to shine for him, to be those stars upon that crown. So, let's go back to Revelation chapter 12, verses 1 now. So, since we have an idea, since we've seen what this church is, now let's just read this with the full comprehension, with the full understanding. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. So this church, this remnant church, is definitely a pure church. This is the church that we must be a part of. And the church is not a building. It is the members. It is those who are converted. It is those who are wanting to give up this gospel message. Will that be you? Let it be you. Let that be your prayer. That God can work for you. That you can be that moon and reflect Christ fully. That you can have Christ's character. And that we, no man will not see us anymore. That we may continue to die to self daily and, and put away self. Put away self and let Christ's character come into us. That's my prayer, okay? And that needs to be all of our prayer. Because we, out of ourselves, we cannot be those stars. We cannot be that moon shining for Christ. Because we are sinful human beings. We, there is no good in us. There is no good in us. Flesh, human man, we are envious against God. We are so sinful against God. We hate God in our natural self. But if we let God come into our hearts, if we have that sun cl clothing us, if we have that moon as our foundation, if we have that word of God as our foundation, if we have the, that crown and those 12 stars upon our head, we can be like Christ. Let us have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for this study. Please let us continue to want and desire to be like you. Please let you, even now, cover us with your life. We are so sinful, but you want to wipe, you want to wash us, that we may be clean. And you want us, you want to put your character in us, Father. Please let us allow you to put your holy character in us, that we may be able to be like you and be with you when we go to heaven. In Jesus' name, Amen. Thank you for watching, and stay tuned for more of our videos about this last room. And remember. We want to be this remnant, but we don't want to be sad about it. We want to be that.